Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy, and today we'll be taking a look at some interesting law points raised in the Overwatch launch blog entitled Overwatch is Back. There are some really interesting things here, including some more information on the Omnic Crisis, a little bit more about the fall of Overwatch, Overwatch in its heyday, and the introduction of a sixth and previously unknown character into the Overwatch original strike team. We'll be taking a quick look through talking points and fun bits of the blog, along with a little light speculation on what new Overwatch story and lore, as always, we may have learned from it too. The link for the blog is in the description below if you haven't read it already. Let's get started. Let's get stuck in with the first point of the blog, which is really interesting. Who is Liao? We're introduced to a new founding member of Overwatch in this blog. We've seen several images in the past of the original Overwatch strike team. We always see the same five people. So of course, that's Jack Morrison, later to become 76, Reaper, as Reyes, Amari, whose whereabouts are unknown at this moment in time, and then Reinhardt Wilhelm and Torbjorn Linto. The world of know all of these people as legends of Overwatch. However, the blog actually says this. The United Nations covertly brought a few of these unique minds together to form a small, nimble team aimed at striking significant blows against Omnic strongholds. Their names, Morrison, Reyes, Amari, Liao, Wilhelm and Lindholm, have since become legendary. So who exactly is Liao? We just don't know, to be honest, and whether they're even still alive. Could they be an agent dismissed in disgrace? The blog also says that some agents were dismissed in disgrace as well. Were they killed in the HQ blast? Were they killed in action? Uh, the interesting thing is that no real evidence, as far as I know at the moment. Um, certainly we'll keep digging, but who do you think they could be? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We get a little bit of an update of sense of timeline, if not precise dates or times. The blog continues by showing a little bit about the current timeline by talking about the museum raid. So it says that the surveillance footage from yesterday's attempted museum heist instantly caught the world's attention. Two former Overwatch agents risked life and limb against two frighteningly capable mercenaries and the theft was thwarted. So if we have a look at timelines, because it mentions yesterday in part of this blog, it kind of confirms that the very first announcement cinematic trailer of Tracer and Winston in the museum is kind of the most recent event in the Overwatch timeline. Now, also in this blog it says that the UN has admitted that Tracer and Winston were not under orders to do this, and therefore their activity is that of vigilantes. Of course, remember that Overwatch activity is still illegal under the Petrus Act, the call that Winston put out in the recall short, and any activities since are illegal as a result. So from now on, any ex-Overwatch agents teaming up or doing Overwatch-style activities is most likely illegal. If Alive is after Recall, there's a quiet piece of background dialogue in Recall apparently suggested, saying that modern data will speak later today or similar, then it gives us a bit of a timeline of Recall happening, then Alive, then the cinematic trailer in the museum. So, very cool. What do you think of all that? Let us know. Now what this blog, and I really like this third point, along with some of the comics, so Far and Torbjorn's comics, you should go and have a look at those digital comics if you haven't already, uh, do, is talk a bit more about the Omnic crisis. So there has been this question, what is an Omnic? We've now got some more information about Omnics and their background. As we're introduced to the Omnic crisis's founding cause in a way, Omnica Corporation. So in the blog, it says that Omnica Corporation revolutionized robotic manufacturing, putting the world on the verge of an economic golden age. Now, Omniums are also explained more. They're said to be massive factories of automated construction machines and self-improving software algorithms. These were marketed as Omniums and installed on every continent. So Omnica Corporation, as a result, in the blog, we also find out a bit more. The Omniums apparently began to break down and independent analysis showed that they would never come close to meeting the promises that Omnica Corporation made about their growth and output. So Omnica was investigated, forcibly dissolved, there was fraud, and all of the Omniums were shut down. Omnica Corporation have put out this substandard product with false promises in making these Omniums. So there's been a problem with Omnica Corporation that's led to this shutdown. The blog then says, the Omnic crisis was actually these defunct and dismantled Omniums waking themselves back up and immediately launching a military campaign against all of humanity. Very, very interesting. So if we just go sideways and take another look at Omnics, in Torbjorn's recent comic, we've actually seen that the Omniums were able to take tech mint for civilian purposes and repurpose them to be battle tech. So we're gonna be teaming up on a comic analysis on Torbjorn's comic, so keep an eye out for that in the future. But in this panel, we can see that Torbjorn talks about a Titan and the fact that the Omniums and the Omnics were able to repurpose what he designed as a construction robot and repurpose it into a weapons machine. So we actually know that Omniums and this kind of Omnic crisis, the self-improving software algorithms were clearly hard at work on repurposing some of the things that Omniums made. So really nice extra details there. There's another bit in the blog. No single country, no matter how powerful its military, could permanently shut down a single Omnium. Worst of all, there were no demands from the Omnics. There was no ideological reason for their aggression. They simply attacked and humanity did not understand why. So it seems as though it's some kind of self-aware AI and problem. Now, if we jump over to Fire's comic, we've seen the Anubis 
God AI in action. So we know in, from this comic that Overwatch actually quarantined this AI after the first Omnic crisis. In the comic, it's shown that it can control other Omnics. It could even launch military assaults and corrupt infrastructure if it's allowed beyond Helix Security's firewalls. So, theory. Could it be that these God AIs caused the Omniums to reactivate? Where did these God AIs come from? I wonder if God AIs took over the Omniums. They produced Omnics under their control. In, in the mission statement comic, we can see that all of the Omnics taken over have a hive mind. And then, perhaps Perhaps when the God AIs were disabled by Overwatch, some of the bots who were taken over, some of the Omnics who were taken over, kept their programming, kept sentience of some sort. And maybe that's how we have Zenyatta, the Shambhali, Mondata, Bastion, these current Omnics, these current sort of bots with their own sense of self. It'll be really interesting to find that anyway, but just a quick theory. What do you reckon? Really interesting how the comics and how this blog tie together. We'll give a bunch more thoughts on that in a different video because it's almost its own subject. Another thing that was of interest in this blog, and I really encourage that you read it, is that we get more of an insight into Overwatch activities post the crisis. We already know that they had a very wide field of responsibility from Olympia Shaw's article on Soldier 76 and Morrison. However, we know that they, from this blog, dealt with rogue omnics, terrorism, warmongering dictators. They also helped with natural disasters and rescue operations and rebuilding afterwards as well. Scientific initiatives to eradicate epidemics, reverse ecological damage, and develop new breakthroughs in medical care. Overwatch's span and Overwatch's scope was very, very wide and perhaps maybe slightly wider even than we'd originally sort of seen. The next cool thing about this blog, it does give a bit more information as to how the fall actually happened in terms of stages. To start with, there was a period of rumours about Black Operations missions. The blog says rumours of Black Ops missions carrying out tasks like assassination and kidnapping were dismissed by the public as paranoid fantasies. Controversial missions stoked public outrage until it reached a fever pitch, and some of Overwatch's most famous and celebrated agents were forced to retire in disgrace. Now this is interesting, and as we're going to find out in a little bit, this phase was before Blackwatch was revealed. So I do wonder what the controversial missions were, and then also who the famous and celebrated agents were who were forced to retire in disgrace. In the final years of Overwatch's existence, says the blog, a top secret division called Blackwatch was revealed. There were stories of assassination, coercion, kidnapping, torture, and worse. Public distrust swelled, a massive explosion wiped out the Overwatch HQ, and even though it was called an accident by the UN, we know what that was. It was a battle and or a dispute between Jack Morrison and Gabriel Reyes. The United Nations had to shut down Overwatch afterwards, the Petrosat came into force. We now know that Blackwatch got unveiled, it got revealed at some point. We wonder who did that. Uh, was it from within? Was it the elements of Blackwatch who were trying to bring down Overwatch, perhaps, as revealed in McCree's website biography? Very interesting to hear more about the fall. Do you think we're going to hear a bit more about Reyes and his role in it in future? Let us know. The final bit that's kind of interesting is that this blog also talks about some changes we've seen in the world since and talks a little bit about the present day. Good news hides some darker trends. Of course, we've seen the tensions between humans and Omnics, particularly after the assassination of the Omnic spiritual leader Mondata in the Alive short. And the blog actually goes to state that war may very well be inevitable, which is a big statement to make. Apparently, local political leaders have accused certain corporations of using covert operatives to persuade government officials into accepting exploitative deals. And when that failed, of hiring mercenaries to, to enact more permanent solutions. Now we know that there's a lot of shifty corporations and companies in Overwatch. I wonder if this is referring to maybe Lumerico, maybe some of the Numbani corporations we can see dotted around the map like perhaps Axiom, Hyde Global in the Junkers comic, or maybe others as well. Are there any particular companies in Overwatch that you think look a bit shady? The final bit of the blog says, We've also seen shadow organisations operating with impunity, often leaving a trail of dead civilians in their wake. Now this probably sounds like Talon. Uh, we know that they're quite a, a big bad and certainly a bad force in the Overwatch universe. Terrorism continues with Talon ever since the Overwatch days and we know that they were responsible via Widowmaker for the assassination of Mundata. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any link between Talon and these corporations as well perhaps. Cheers for tuning in to my quick lore analysis of the launch blog. I think you can agree there's some really cool background detail in there and then some nice little teasers and tidbits for the future as well. If you like this video, please hit that like button below, subscribe, do comment with anything that you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. We do a whole bunch of lore content, comic analysis, short analyses, our voice line videos where we do character lore as well as exploring their interactions in game and of course Easter eggs and map lore as well. Do check all of that out by clicking through the links below and the playlists on the channel. Until next time, I've been Hammy. Cheers for stopping by and take it easy.